Hello everyone and welcome to the iSpring webinar. Thank you very much for joining us today as we are going to speak about how to create online testing with iSpring QuizMaker 8. My name is Anna and I'm a customer care manager at iSpring and I will be the moderator for today's webinar. As a presenter we have Brian Tarr. Hi Brian, how are you today? Hi, great, thanks. Brian is a systems engineer and video producer at iSpring. You may have seen some of his great video tutorials on our website. By the end of this webinar, I will announce our special offer, so be sure to stay with us till, till the very end. And we'd love to hear from you, so don't hesitate to submit your questions in the chat box on the right panel of your GoToWebinar window. All right, let's get started, and Brian, please take over the screen. Okay, let me just get set up here. Turn off my cam. Okay, you see my screen? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, I can. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, welcome to the webinar. So today I'm going to show you how to leverage the power of iSpring QuizMaker for creating an online test. We'll cover five principles which will help you get the most out of your assessment. The first principle is creating optimal tests utilizing a variety of question types. Not all subject material is equal, and that's why iSpring offers 11 graded and 12 survey question types for you to zero in on the best way to test your learner's knowledge. So let's cover them briefly, shall we? So true-false is just what it sounds like. You provide a statement and the learner says whether it's true or false. And I'd like to take a moment here to show you that almost every graded question has a non-graded survey variant. In this case, it's yes-no. And there are also two unique survey questions, which I'll show you in a moment. So another classic graded question is multiple choice. And simply enter the question and provide one correct answer and several distractors. A variant of this question is the multiple response, in which there's more than one correct answer. A type-in question can be used when you really want to challenge your learners to come up with the answer themselves, or if spelling is important, for example. The matching question requires users to match up pairs of items, and the sequence question requires them to put items in the correct sequence. A numeric question calls for a numeric value that agrees with whatever mathematical operator you choose. And fill in the blank is like a type in question, but ask the user to complete multiple blanks in a piece of text. The same goes for multiple choice text, except here the users are given possible answers to choose from. The word bank question also has a text with blanks, but provides the words below to drag and drop them in the right places. A hotspot question can be used for any visual subject material like maps, diagrams, or anything that requires the user to identify locations, objects, or elements. And as I said before, the survey question category provides non-graded variants for all these except the hotspot and also includes two more. Now I'm sure you've all seen these Likert scale questions where you're asked to evaluate statements on a scale from 1 to 5 but you can add as many custom scale degrees as you like. And finally, the essay question prompts the user to write a free-form text on any topic. So using this arsenal of question types, you can choose the best way to test knowledge or discover the opinions of your audience. Now before we move on, I'd just like to mention how easy it is to switch between form view and slide view. Take this multiple choice text question, for example. So after you've added your text and the blanks, you can switch over to make sure it looks great for your learners. And also it goes without saying that you can enhance your quiz with pictures, equations, audio, and video. But in the latest version, we've also added the capability to record voiceovers directly into your questions and feedback messages. <clears throat> so the next principle I'd like to discuss is creating adaptive branched assessments. Feedback and branching are just two of the capabilities that really set online quizzes apart from their pen and paper counterparts. With these simple tools, you can make each quiz not only an assessment, but also an individual learning opportunity. So based on correct, incorrect, and even partially correct answers, 
you can provide customized feedback messages. And feedback messages come with advanced font styles, bulleted lists, and hyperlinks. And another new feature we've added recently is the ability to attach pictures, equations, and audio to feedback messages. So also in this section here, you can set up branching to a different part of the quiz. So for example, if the learner gets this geography question wrong, he or she will be taken to an info slide, which will give them more information about the geography of Europe. And learners who already have the necessary knowledge will be fast-tracked to the next question. So you'll never waste anybody's time telling them what they already know. And going here to the next question, you can see that you can even add custom feedback for each answer. First, you just select by answer from the feedback drop down here. And for example, many people think Mont Blanc is the tallest mountain in Europe, so you can add a special feedback message if they choose that answer. And if you really want to go nuts, you can even add answer-based branching. This powerful feature gives you limitless possibilities, especially if you want to gamify your quiz. Okay, so now let's move on to the next principle, which is scoring. So if you go to the quiz properties, you can set a passing score here. And you can also choose whether to grade in percentage or an absolute point value. And you can also choose how this score is displayed to your learners at the end of the quiz. And over here in the question default section, you can set default scoring options. Assign points for correct answers, and even assign a penalty for incorrect answers. You can also choose whether or not to apply the penalty if the user skips the question. So now let's go back here to the question and see how custom scoring works. First, you go to the Options tab. And then make sure this box is unchecked to apply custom options. So if a question is particularly important for understanding the subject material, you can give bigger rewards and bigger penalties here. And you can even set custom values for each answer choice. First, select by answer from the dropdown, and then apply positive and negative points. So positive points for the correct answer, we can give some negative points for Mont Blanc. So say, for example, if you've gone out of your way in the course material to warn students against a common misapprehension like this, you can impose a severe penalty if they ignore your warnings. OK, so now let's move on to the next principle, which is publishing formats. So when you're ready to publish your test, just click Publish. And There we go. Sorry, computer's a little slow here. Here we go. OK. Let's see, where were we? OK, so iSpring Quizmaker gives you several options for publishing. By far, the best format for publishing online is HTML5, which works on mobile devices and all modern browsers. If you work at a company that's still using an older version of Internet Explorer, for example, you can still publish to Flash. And if you want the best of both worlds, you can publish in combined Flash and HTML5 mode, which will automatically detect the device and open the appropriate format. And you can also check this option to enable iSpring Play, which is a free mobile app that lets your students save the quiz to their mobile devices for offline viewing. And if you don't already have your own website or LMS for hosting content, iSpring offers a couple of convenient options which allow direct one-click publishing. So iSpring Cloud is a hosting platform which offers fast sharing through email, social media, or embedding on a website or blog. And iSpring Learn is a full-fledged LMS with powerful capabilities for managing users, groups, and organizations, and a full set of reporting features which we'll talk about a little later. Now, if you do have an LMS that you're using, rest assured that iSpring Quizmaker publishes to a variety of LMS formats. Just go here to the Learning Course tab and select the format from the drop-down list. iSpring provides excellent support for SCORM, AICC, Blackboard, TinCan, and even the new CMI5 standard. 
And finally, just because QuizMaker is a powerhouse online authoring tool doesn't mean you can't use it to create a classic pen and paper quiz. So just select the Microsoft Word output option to export it to a document for printing or sharing. And if this version is, ooh, sorry. Uh, so if this version is for your students, make sure to check that option so they don't see the answer. Or uh, sorry, uncheck that option so they don't see the answers. Okay. So now let's move on to the final principle, which is collecting and analyzing test results. If you don't have an LMS, don't worry. You can have detailed quiz results sent to your email address or, or a web server. Just go to the quiz properties and then go to the results section. So you can set up different options based on if the user passes or fails. Just make sure this option is checked and enter your email address here. And if you're sending results to a server, just check this option and enter the URL of the script on your server which parses results. And there's a whole article on our website about this feature which you can read by clicking this link. And as for the email results, you can customize them by checking this sub option and clicking here. And in this window, you can configure your results email, including sender, subject, disclaimer, and messages. So let's have a look at an example email to see how it looks. And as you can see, this shows not only my score, but also the details on each question I answered. So you can really find out your, where your learners need help. So now let's have a look at the reporting capabilities of iSpring Learn LMS. So there are 18 report types which help you zero in on exactly the information you need to improve the learning process. Quiz reports provide information on scores as well as particular answers and attempts for each user. People reports will show you the activities of individuals or groups, where learners excel, and where they need improvement. Content reports will reveal how your users are progressing through their courses. And e-commerce reports give you an overview of your sales history. And also we've added this new uh, learning path summary report, which goes with uh, customized learning paths, which you can create to send your learners step by step through a course. So with this capability to analyze learners' feedback, you can measure the effectiveness of your online training system and assess students' knowledge so you'll understand what changes must be made for future success. Okay, so that's uh, about it for my part. Now I'll pass it back over to Anna, who will tell you about our special offer, and then I'll be happy to take some Q&A. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Thank you very much for your presentation. That was very informative. And now I'll announce our special offer. So for our webinar attendees only, we would like to offer our quiz creator tool for just $297. Plus, you get iSpring Cloud Pro plan for three months for free. iSpring Cloud is, um, is our platform where you can easily host and share your quizzes, courses, PowerPoint presentations, and other e-learning content. So if you'd like to take advantage of our special offer, don't forget to put your email in the chat box. And here is our contact information in case you have any additional questions. And if you'd like to keep in touch with us, feel free. Feel free to either give us a call or send us an, e uh, an email. And uh, now we're ready for a Q&A. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the question box and we'll be happy to answer them. And I'll pass it back to, uh, over to Brian. Yeah, so I don't see any questions. Uh, so it, it, I know that was probably a lot of information. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to go over any of that other stuff. And also, uh, I guess we can end the webinar if you don't have any questions. But I'd also just like to show you guys, if you are using your own LMS, there's a page on our website that lists all the LMSs that we've thoroughly investigated and uh, gone through compatibility checks. So if you are using one of these LMSs, 
you're welcome to visit this page. And if you'd like to submit your own LMS for testing, you can just use this button right here. I'm going to copy this link and put it right in the chat for you. But uh, otherwise, if there aren't any questions, I guess we can uh, wrap up. Yes. Uh, I don't see any questions either. So um, thanks, everyone, for joining the webinar. I will be happy to send you the recording of the webinar so you can view it one more time. OK, thanks again, Brian, for your presentation. That was great. Sure. Thanks for hosting. Thanks, okay. everybody, for joining. Have a great Thanks. day. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.